just run. They can't play just fast. They have to cover the whole field. So uh, LSU's in pretty good shape. Anytime you can get that four to five yards on first down, you can be successful. LSU behind Mickey Gidry at the Tiger 48. to midfield and that's all total yardage in the first quarter LSU 53 Kentucky 36 you wouldn't know it LSU trails six nothing those turnovers can really hurt you not a whole lot of offense out there at all the first quarter well that's right you multiply that by four and for either team bird it's not too much third down and three LSU at midfield Tolbert is split out to the right side. Moss to the near side. Gidry drops straight back. Tony Moss, he's got it. He's got a first down. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 39 and credit him with a gain of 12. Benzinger knocked him out of bounds. As you see, there's plenty of time Mickey Gidry sets up. There are only four men rushing, and the defensive end on the other side kind of drops off for a screen. Leaves all the men in the defensive secondary. He threw it under him. Catches the ball right there, and Tony Moss appears to be hurt a little bit on the sidelines. He's twisted his ankle on that artificial turf to the side. When you come off with grass cleats, step on artificial turf. It's tough. Alvin Lee split left. Tigers with a first down. They're rolling at the 38-yard line. Here goes Fuller. Boy, Kentucky has done a pretty good job in stopping Eddie Fuller thus far. Tony Massey, the left end, first man to hit him. He's a 6'2", 221-pound junior out of Somerset, Kentucky. Well, they had a soft spot started there where Victor Jones missed the linebacker coming in. He just missed the block, which left one man for the tackle. Moss with four catches for 71 yards. Second down. Gidry pitches back. Here's a reverse to Moss. Gets a block. A great pursuit by Kentucky. Catches him at the 38-yard line. Adams and Gardner combine on the play. And Moss, uh, as Bert alluded to a moment ago, appeared to be shaken up, and he comes off the field again, appeared to be holding his left arm. Tony Moss coming on a reverse, not your normal play on a second and 10. Typically, a reverse is most effective on a first down. Tony Moss is hurt on the sidelines. When you have something going, when your running game is going, when your passing game is going, it's a tough second and long because they're looking for things like that. Third down, long nine. Fuller in motion. Gidry looks over the middle, fires the ball. That was not a catch, but it was a great try by Alvin Lee. Almost drops back, looking over the field, looking short, has to have nine yards, and almost makes it in the seam. Alvin Lee almost made the catch. I think he had anticipated him coming underneath a little flatter on that. Brian Griffith, now he's the pooch kicker. He's the one that tries to get it down inside the 10. Let's see if he can do it. Aims for that right coffin corner. Gets it to two. Goes into the end zone. 37 yard punt. So Kentucky will take over with a first down and 10 at the 20 yard line. There's Mike the Tiger and some of his fans on the sideline. As we look at Jerry Claiborne, and I guess he's pretty happy with the way the Kentucky's defense has played thus far. He is, and history will tell you the longer you keep a team in the game that shouldn't be in the game, Kentucky's a fine team, but they're not as good as LSU. The more momentum they'll gain and the tougher it'll be all the time. Well, that's a good point. Four on the run. It's complete across the 25 and up to about the 26 to Ivy Joe Hunter. Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young made the tackle, 5'9", 179-pound junior. As we look at Mike Archer, and in front of him, Pete Jenkins, actually to his left side, but in front as we see him on the camera, the fine defensive coordinator of the Tigers of LSU. Once again, Kentucky being effective on first down, seven yards. Second down, three. 
not much there. Off left tackle. Andy Murray, Harry. Murray, the fullback, 6'1", 237 pound junior out of Louisville. Only had 50 yards on 13 attempts coming into tonight's ball game. And there's Harvey Williams. Wishing he were playing, I'm sure. But I don't think we'll see him again. Well, Tommy warming up again, and I'm quite sure we'll probably see him on the next series. Kentucky 0 for 3 in third down conversions. And the Wildcats want to talk things over on a third down in about two. 11.22 to go, and we're still in the second quarter of the ball game. Countdown. The quarterback of the Wildcats of Kentucky. Bird, he's playing hurt. You saw him holding that right hand a few minutes ago. Tough kid. Pretty good ball player. Has a lot of talent. Hasn't been that effective up until tonight, it seems like. But he is tough, but it's tough for a quarterback. Not so much the fact that it hurts so much. It's just it makes it hard to hold the ball when your jam fingers hurt your hand. But they have a third and short. Big third down play. Ivy Joe Hunter dives across that 30-yard line. And he's got the first down. Six foot, 218 pound senior. Coming off your left side, guard pulling. Gets outside, we have a little force out there. But he dives far, gets the first down. Hunter has five carries for 15 yards thus far tonight. Kentucky with a first down at the Wildcat 32. Hunter comes in motion near side. Four, rolls right, gets it out to Hunter. Made a good move by Bice. Managed to pick up a few on the plate about the 36-yard line. Coming up rapidly was Jimmy Young to make the tackle. That's an, another one of those plays that isn't necessarily in your book. Jimmy Young's coming off the sidelines. He's hurt. At the 38-yard line. Young shaking up on the play. It appears as though he hurt his right arm. Hopefully we can get a report down there from Greg Bowser in a couple of minutes. Kentucky leads LSU 6-0, second quarter. Wildcats at their own 38-yard line. And that one's going to be whistled dead as a flag is down. And it appears to be they didn't get the playoff in time. 10-11 to go, second quarter. And Kentucky... Surprising a crowd of about 80,000 as they lead LSU by a score of six to nothing. Well, Jimmy Young apparently is going to the locker room and we hope to have a report as to the extent of his injury in just a few minutes. SMU transfer a couple of seasons ago and he's been a fine player for the Tigers of LSU. Throw. It's complete to the 41-yard line and knocked out of bounds immediately is Alfred Jones by Corey Raymond. Gain of eight on the play. Raymond, a redshirt freshman out of New Iberia. Appears to be just a little bit shy, probably about a foot short of a first down. So the Wildcats leading by six are now one and four one out of four on third down conversions here's the give straight ahead to Murray and he's close to that first down at the 41 yard line appears to have it and let's wait for the signal and 
let's see where they spot it. He's got the first down at the 42 yard line and now they finally move the change. You know Bert Mike Archer was worried about an emotional letdown of the Tigers after that big big draining win over Auburn last week. What do you think Bert? What are we seeing right now? Well I think we're certainly seeing a letdown right now but I think there's a lot of time left. LSU is not by any stretch of means way out of the game. It's just six points. We have to stop them here and go on. Murray dives across that 45 and he's tripped up on the play. Greg Jackson coming up from weak safety. And putting an ouch on it. 9-11 to go, second quarter. And six yards to go. We got a second down seven. Kentucky just shy of their own 46-yard line. Complete just out of the hands of the intended receiver, and let's go down on the field to Greg Bowser. The LSU Tigers knew it would be a physical game. J the defensive secondaries suffered a loss here. They've got Jimmy Young, who's going to the locker room for an x ray to his right arm. We'll look at the results, and he may not be back in the second half. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Greg. Well, we hope to hear from them in just a few minutes as to his condition. Third down, seven. fans making some noise for the LSU defense draw play flag is down as he gets to about the 47 yard line Al Baker on the carry left side linebacker Mike Merla made the tackle and Lanny if there's one place we can't stand to have an injury is in that defensive secondary LSU is skinny depth wise in their defensive secondary so we don't need one there and we have it. Penalty against Kentucky. Tigers turn it down as they had stopped them. It'll bring up fourth down. Jeff Nelson in to punt the football. That appears to be Fuller and Jackson, the deep man. And that's another place that the Tigers might miss Jimmy Young. Will miss Jimmy Young. On punt returns. There's a flag down at about the 38-yard line, and it might be running into the kicker. Just a 29-yard punt. Are you judging for yourself? He has kicked the ball. Did he tip it? If he tips it, all rules are off. I tell you what, they should send all punter straight from the punting position to Hollywood every time. It looked like Mark Bouti was the man that hit him, but I think he ran into one of the Tigers too, Bird. He was unable to, e to evade him. So there's a big break once again for Kentucky. And it is a first down. And it's only a five-yard penalty, Lanny, and they only needed four this time. It was enough. You got a hat like that, don't you? Two or three. I, it makes it tough to wear it with a headset up here in the booth, but as soon as I leave it at halftime, we'll be down. The right. Place. First down. Kentucky alive at the LSU 47. Four pumps one time. He's in trouble and unloads it, and he just threw that one away. Darrell Phillips really put the heat on him. Darrell Phillips in your face. Incomplete. Second down. Well, four, of course, didn't have to take the sack. He wisely threw it away, and really the nearest man to the football was Andy Murray, but he threw that one about five feet over his head. Wisely threw it way out of the play. Tiger defense has been out there a lot in the first half. Second down 10, Kentucky. At the 47. Four pump fakes, wants his man to go downfield. Incomplete. Pass was too high for John Bolden. And the Tigers with pretty good coverage on the play. And we got another flag down at the 44-yard line. Raymond and Jackson with the coverage. This is one of those quick screens, but the corner rolls up. 
And when he does that, it's supposed to be automatic, split the corner and the safety. The receiver didn't read it, didn't get it there in time, four read it, was looking for him, pumped, but the receiver didn't move it up the field. And I'm glad he didn't because there was a gap there. Raymond took a pretty good shot from Jackson on that play, on the coverage, ineligible downfield. That's what happens when you have a quick screen that turns into a 15-yard pass. So that'll back him up and make it second down and 15. Even though offensive linemen are always the smartest men on the field, I've yet to see one read a coverage. You've always said that, Bert. You needed those guys. Four in trouble. Unloads it. Out of bounds. Well, right now, the Tigers doing something that can really make a difference, and that's put heat on the quarterback, and they have been coming with a vengeance the last few plays. Phillips and Clint James again. They have done that. There wasn't much time. Clint James is right up there. Four is dropping back. Looking down the field, it was one of these look to the right, throw back left, and throws it completely out of the picture. Boy, did Phillips, did Phillips beat the center, Crowley, on that one. Third and 15, four again to throw. Incomplete. Pass was intended for Bolden. Phillips again with good pressure. And now the Tiger defense does the job. Phillips is an excellent football player in the right position, nose tackle. He is as tough as anybody you can put on the center at any time. He's the perfect height, the perfect weight. Nelson to putt again. He'll kick from about the 39. High kick coming downfield. Fuller feels it at the nine. And gets it to about the 13, maybe the 14-yard line. 43-yard punt, four yards on the return. Gardner on the tackle. There's Mike Archer, the LSU Tigers. And he's looking for an offensive draft. Tommy Hudson coming in the game, and he's ready to play again. And appears to be another quarterback warming up for Kentucky. That's number 14, Chuck Broughton. But the Tigers have it right now at their own 14. Hudson. Hands off to Fuller. He's got a little room this time. And he takes it all the way to the 22-yard line. Good blocking up front. Kuti and Rodrigue. Chenault made the tackle. As you'll see, they go to the well, always to the left side. Norwood, Rodrigue, Kuti gets a cutoff block. Fuller sees the cut, brings it back upfield. Fine game, nine yards. Fuller, 10 carries for 36 yards. Second down, one. Fuller again. He's got the first down of the 30. Let's see, the 25, and they're going to push him back to about the 23-yard line. Randy Holler in the left side linebacker made the tackle, along with right end Jay Dorch. First down for the Tigers. Hello, get a response from the crowd. It's been a while. Seems as though Kentucky has really pretty much controlled the football. Ivy Joe Hunter, leading rusher for the Wildcats of Kentucky. There you see the time, 7.04 and counting, second quarter. Kentucky leads LSU 6-0. Hudson fakes. He's got time, and it's incomplete as he looked for Moss. A little bit deeper downfield, Willie Williams, a tight end, appeared to be open, but Hudson didn't see him. Second down at the 25. That's one of those plays where I'm not sure he was throwing the Moss there. He might have been going downfield, and it just was behind him, but would have been a completion behind him. Inside of seven minutes now, Tom Hudson, of course, checking at sideline for the play. Tyke Tolbert in the ball game for LSU at wide receiver. Alvin Lee, split left, inside of him in a slot, Tony Moss. Looks like a blitz coming, the corners are up. See if Hudson reads it. No. Rolls to the outside, goes over the middle, and it's complete. Up 
to the 37-yard line. Alvin Lee, Chenault brought him down. 12 yards on the play, down to Greg Bowser. They're coming out of a slot here. Tony Moss turning to the outside. Tommy Hudson reads it, throws across his body to Lee. Fine play. You don't see it at the end, but it looks like they rough the quarterback, which will be a big penalty, big break for LSU. This may be the move. Well, the Tigers have needed a shot in the arm, but let's see if they got it right there. Now let's go down to Greg Bowser on the sideline. The Tiger offense is finally beginning to move the football. Defensively, though, they've suffered some injuries. We, met, we mentioned Jimmy Young. Now Ronnie Holman, inside linebacker, has a bruised right leg. He may return. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Greg. Well, the Tigers finally journey into Never Never Land, and that, of course, being Kentucky Wildcat territory. Fuller, across the 45, and down to about the 42. Halloran made the tackle. Tigers starting to run the ball a little bit better now. Hudson getting the ball to Fuller deep in the backfield, gives Fuller the option to go right and left, up the middle. He just reads the blocks of the offensive line, picks a soft spot, and picks up five yards. Second down, five. 80,000 strong at Tiger Stadium. Starting to make a little noise now. And the Tiger offense responding. Here comes Moss. Hudson fakes. He wants to throw. He's got some time. He throws down the middle, and it's picked off. To the 25, the 30. Chenault, and he's finally down at the 36-yard line. It appeared as though one of the Tigers deep was open. Hudson underthrew it a little bit, and Chenault just stepped right in there and picked it off. Tommy Hudson dropping back. It was a play-action play. Two Fuller, and then he's trying to get it to Fuller down the field. He was trying to hold Chenault, the linebacker at the line of scrimmage. He read pass, obviously, from the offensive line, setting up for pass. Comes up with an interception. The ball was just under thrown on that. Once again, you see the offensive line with the pocket, which tells the linebackers, get out of there. It's a pass. Chenault gets back, gets the interception, and shows why he's probably on defense and not a running back. He doesn't move real well with the ball. But he came up with a big play there. Hot's in there. You see Fuller. Had he just gotten it over Chenault, it would have been a play. Burt, can you really loft the ball that softly with that kind of coverage? That's the only way he could have completed that pass. It's risky, isn't it, right down the middle of the field? Well, he just underthrew it. There, there was an opportunity to get the ball in there. Williams, you see there, hit in the stomach. Going to be all right, I believe. That's his older brother there saying, you'll be all right. Just give it a week or so. So Kentucky gets it right back at the 36. Watch the throw. Pass incomplete at about the 49-yard line. And that was intended for number 88, Charlie Darrington. Chuck Broughton now in the ball game at quarterback. We saw him warming up just a few minutes ago. 5.38 to go. Burt, right now, it just appears that the Tigers offensively are not into the ball game. They're kind of flat. That last partial drive was the closest stack similarly to a drive that we've seen thus far. They had it going, just one bad pass, and they messed it all up. Broughton, a junior, out of Ashland, Kentucky. There's a little quick draw play. Al Baker. And gets to about the 44-yard line. Daryl Phillips, he's played a whale of a game thus far for the Tigers of LSU. And the Tiger defense has really been busy here in the first half. But they've responded well, allowing only six points on two big breaks, as they did last week. Keep LSU in the game. Keep LSU in the game. Let the LSU offense capture its momentum, get it going. They'll put it together. That's a great point, Bert, because the defense last week Enable the offense to win that football game. And if they can stop them here, third and three. Broughton rolls right, fires the pass, and it's batted down. Jamie Bice stuck a hand up there, and that'll bring up a fourth down and three. And once again, the Tiger defense rises to the occasion. Now, Tony Moss had gone into the dressing room. Let's look at it again. Jamie Bice back. Reads the quarterback size, jumps up, tip ball, out of bounds. Big play defense, gets the ball back for the LSU offense, gives them an opportunity to go again. Well, Jimmy Young apparently all right. 
He's back in double safety to return this punt. Goes off the side of Nelson's foot. Jimmy Young wisely moves up and fair catches it at the Tiger 24. 33 yard punt. Jimmy Young, sure handed return man. That's the one thing you have to do before you go with the ball. You've got to catch it. And nobody knows how tough it is out there all by yourself to catch a punt. Well, Bert, that's experience right there. That was one of those nose up footballs. Had he let it hit, it could have bounced 15 yards further down the field. And that's probably what would have happened, but he stopped it. Now we have the ball on the 25 yard line with an opportunity to move it with four minutes and 45 seconds left. LSU trailing Kentucky, 6 0. Hands off to Victor Jones. Runs into his own man after a gain of a lot of yard or two to the 26-yard line. And Halliburton, the tight end, trying to block out there. And Jones ran right up his back. Tony Massey on the tackle for the Wildcats of Kentucky. At the 46, rather 26-yard line, a gain of just about two yards. Second down and eight. Second down. 4.18 to go. Clock running. Tigers trying to get something going offensively. Burt, they need a big play. Hudson with three receivers to the near side. Hudson to throw. He's going to keep. Beckett's Victor Jones it is for the football. And he gets it all the way to the 38, 39 yard line. Quick thinking, Victor Jones. That may be one of the most unusual pass completions you see for a game. Tommy Hudson dropping back, trying to get it to the slot. Defensive line jumps up, bats the ball right there. Victor Jones wisely catches the ball and tries to make something out of nothing, which he did. First down. Fine play, Victor. Well, I had lost the ball, but Victor Jones didn't. It came right back to him. Big play? Maybe so. First down. LSU at the 39. Play to Jones. He dives across that 40 to about the 42 yard line. Massey on the tackle. 319 to go. That's going to bring up a second down and a long seven. Tolbert bringing in a play for Tom Hudson. Alvin Lee split left. Tony Moss in the slot. Tolbert to the right. Just one running back. Hudson drops straight back. Motions for a man to go downfield. Wide open. He's got it at the 30-yard line. That was Tolbert on the reception. And Hudson directed traffic. And Tolbert read it beautifully. And Tommy laid it in there. 28 yards and a first down. Good vision of the field. Tommy Hudson somewhat with a little happy feet. He's moving a little too much in the pocket, but he gets it down, sees Tyke on the sidelines, gets the ball to him, 28-yard reception, big play, good eyesight by Tommy Hudson there as we see a flag, and nobody knows what it's about right now. But we're fixing to find out. Well, the Tigers will turn down that personal foul infraction. They'll take the game. Now this crowd of 80,000 starting to get back into the ball game. There's some young Tiger fans with a pretty good likeness of Mike the Tiger that they drew up. 2.38 remaining. Now this could make it a completely different first half, Bert, if you go into the dressing room trailing 7-6 with an offense that for the most part has been sputtering. Just shy of the 30. about the 27. Eddie Fuller, he's been busy tonight. Donnie Gardner made the tackle. Kentucky has played the run overall pretty well tonight thus far. They have been pretty effective on defense. As we've seen, we've not scored. We haven't had the good first down plays, but you see LSU kind of figuring out what they need to do. The last two possessions, they've moved the ball and they're moving it now. Second down. Eight yards to go, just more than two minutes remaining. Hudson. Victor 
Jones. He gets to the 25, and a host of Wildcats pushing back, led by the charge of Oliver Barnett, a big six foot three, 285 pound junior left tackle. Stop by Barnett. Clock running with 140 to go. And of course, the Tigers would like to get more than three. Third down and five. Of course, they've got a fine kicker. David Browndike, 10 of 11 field goals this year, but the Tigers want six if they can get it. Tom Hudson. In trouble, rolls left. Moss to the 20, to the 18-yard line. First down, LSU. Moss helped him out, did what a good receiver does. He came back to the football. Yes, but I'm afraid we're going to find offensive holding against LSU, which will nullify the play and bring it up to third and 15. Tony Moss did come back to the ball. Tommy Hodson did read it, but if he did do something there, he put some pressure on the tackle. By sliding to the outside, the tackle thinks that the quarterback is to his inside, which means that he's going to block him. As you see, Tommy Hodson moving out, which puts Packman 74 in a position that the guy is going to the outside instead of to the inside, and instinct makes you want to reach out and grab him, and that's what happened on that one. Tough play for the tackle because he thinks the quarterback is inside, but he's outside of him, which means the rusher is going a different direction. Third and 15, big play. Good reaction by Hodson as he says, oh, shucks, on that penalty. Let's see if he can get it back, and it's going to be knocked away from him on a great defensive charge by Barnett, but the Tigers... Fortunately, come up with a football, and he just slipped up behind him. It's credited with a sack. Tommy Hudson never feels or sees this rush on this one. Barnett comes right around the corner, slaps the ball out of his hand. Got the quick corner on Packard right there. Barnett is a fine player for Kentucky. He, he's quick, he's strong, and he's big. And he gets around the end, and you can see Tommy Hudson is quite upset. Griffith will punt the football. It's a high kick. He aims for the sideline. It's going to hit inside the 15, and it, uh, did they get it at the one? Yes. Boy, that was some play downfield. Mike Abair, and what a terror on special teams he is. Pat O'Neill also. There's Mike the Tiger trying to get these Tigers going. 22 seconds remaining. Kentucky leads LSU 6-0. Well, the crowd would like to see a turnover. Short gain on the play. Clock did not move. I believe that's happened some other time down here, Lanny. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, some people claim that happened, right? Darren Bilberry on the carry. It's time out on the field with a score. Kentucky 6, LSU nothing. Should you know more about Social Security? Many people don't know the half of it. I knew I paid for it out of every paycheck. Well, that's just the way it was. But now I see it's a part of my whole retirement plan. I didn't think Social Security would be around when I retire. But now I know there's enough money to pay benefits way into the next century. Get the whole story. Call 1-800-937-2000 for this free booklet and see what's in it for you. Social Security. It never stops working. seconds remaining in the first half. Kentucky leading LSU by a score of six to nothing. Burt, Tigers going to have to go in at halftime, map a few things out, and get that offense going. I would like to be a fly on the wall in the locker room this tonight. I have a feeling Mike Archer oh, has a few things to say to his LSU team. I'll bet he does. And you talked earlier at the top of the show about Kentucky being physical. Tigers have paid the price. They've had three or four guys hurt already. They do it every year. Jerry Claiborne on the sidelines. 
One second. That was a long one second. <laughs> 21 seconds remaining. Kentucky with the football inside their own three yard line. I don't know what all the palavers about. Looks like we're finally ready to get back to action. Well, the crowd would love to see Kentucky turn it over right here. Bill Berry again, not much there. And Pete Jenkins trying to get him to call timeout, and once again, the clock is stuck at 21. And that's got to be upsetting to the Wildcats of Kentucky. Got to take a couple of three seconds anyway. So the Tigers hoping to get the football back with maybe a chance uh, at a field goal maybe before the first half runs out. Well, at this rate, they'll have 21 seconds left. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to get a couple of taken off that scoreboard or at least if they can't get the scoreboard right that they'll get the time down on the field. But probably in the neighborhood of uh, 16 or 17 I would estimate is the official time. For some reason the clock is not moving. will feature shopping, entertainment, fashion, food and special events. Proceeds benefit community Kentucky backed up. They're down inside the five yard line. There's a look at Daryl Phillips, all Southeastern Conference nose guard last year. He's played a whale of a ball game tonight, even though his team is on the short end of a six to nothing count. Kentucky would like to get it just a little bit further in order to give Jeff Nelson a little more room in which to kick that football. Because where they are right now, he would be backed up just about to the back of the end zone. Chuck Broughton, the quarterback, keeps the ball. Tigers nail him at the three-yard line. Sancho tackles him in the end zone, but of course he'll get his forward progress to about the two and a half or three. And once again, the clock does not move as it's been stuck for the last three plays on 21 seconds. Timeout again, LSU. But that means they have one more chance. And a real good chance to block a punt because you don't have the depth by the punter. Claiborne's wondering how much time there is on the clock. Hey, that's a ticker in his hand. He's got his own stopwatch. He knows how much time is left. He's been to Baton Rouge before. He's been around. And he's on the field. Nelson will punt the football. We may get a signal from here as uh, from him as to how much time is left in the first half. Hold up some fingers there. Jerry. I think it's more than one. Nelson with three punts tonight for a 41 yard average. Chuck Broughton still in at quarterback. Obviously, just a few seconds left. So they're just going to run it out with this play as Broughton automatically stops the clock. So it must have been just that one finger step. he held up must have been right. So that's the end of the first half and a rather bizarre ending. As we see Mike Archer, and I would imagine there might be a little uh, scorching dissertation at halftime. Mike is a well spoken individual, and I think he would choose his words wisely. Really, not a lot of offense in the first half of the football game. Early, a couple of breaks, a fumble, a pass interception, and it's really been the difference thus far, Bert, as Kentucky was able to cash him into field goals. That is correct. Six to nothing. LSU's defense has kept LSU in the game. LSU's offense has got to get back in the game. 80,000 at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge as the LSU Tigers last week with a very emotional come from behind win on an 11-yard touchdown pass from Tom Hodson to Eddie Fuller to beat fourth-ranked Auburn. And incidentally, that is the highest-ranked team that LSU has knocked off in many years. A big, big win. We kind of hoped the Tigers would be riding that crest tonight coming into the ball game, but Mike Archer talked about it. He was a little bit worried about the Tigers being uh, 
a little bit not emotional, and that may be the problem thus far tonight. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. Kentucky leading 6-0. The excitement is what makes a Calder Day special. Post time, 1 p.m. Did you know that almost one-fifth of our Navy is made up of civilians who leave their jobs at a moment's notice to help defend our country? They are members of the Naval Reserve. They take time off from their jobs to help defend our country. But for them to do that job right, they need time to train. If you're an employer, give them the time they need. With your help, our country will remain strong and ready. Support the National Guard and Reserve. Protect their future while they protect yours. When Fran fell, he called for help. But the only ones there were ignorance, incompetence, indifference. Fran called for help again. Confusion came instead. At last, help came. Help knew what to do. In times of emergency, are you help? Learn Red Cross first aid, where you work, or call your local chapter. Well, welcome back to halftime. I'm Jordy Holtberg with a score six nothing, Kentucky on top. It's kind of deja vu of a week ago, although the emotion is certainly not the same. The score is the same. Auburn led its halftime 6-0, and now Kentucky. Where has LSU's offense gone? Well, we don't know about that. I'm sure, as you mentioned earlier, Doug and Lanny, that, uh, Burton Lanny, excuse me, that they're probably having a nice little confrontation in the locker room right now because Tommy Hudson, once again, has not had a very good first half. Bring in Greg Bowser now to talk a little bit about it. Once again, Greg, defense has kept the Tigers in the ballgame, but we've got to talk about offense. Kentucky plays in that zone, that roll-up zone, that seems like there's a lot of holes out there, but Tommy Hudson and Gidry haven't found the seam yet. Well, the Wildcats have been able to put pressure on Tommy, and he hadn't been able to, to have time to get the ball off. The thing about it was, uh, during the breaks, the LSU coaches had the offense over talking to them, saying, hey, you guys have got to settle down. You've got to start moving the football. They haven't done anything to surprise us. Look for LSU to just go back to do what they do best. You've been in those halftime conversations where things haven't been going well. What do you think Mike Archer and, more importantly, Pete Jenkins are talking about at this point in time? Pete Jenkins is just saying, let's just stay with our game plan. We're playing well. We can come back and win it 7-6. Offensively, Ed John Brecker's telling them, we've got to block people. We can't let them confuse us. We've just got to go out, play basics. LSU's got to move the ball. Uh, Kentucky's going to be in this game. Could possibly win it. Kentucky's one of those teams that has taken advantage of opportunities, fumbles and interceptions in both times, although not being able to get in the end zone for six. They've capitalized, converted, scored field goals. Has that taken some of the wind out of LSU's sail? I think the Tigers, after last week's game, Jordan, just happy to still be in the, in the football game. Only down six to nothing. They can still come back and win it, as they did a week ago. Okay, Greg, thank you very much. Now, as is our custom at halftime, we'll take you to the Golden Band from Tigerland with their halftime show. And stay with us. Much more to come on halftime. Sunshine Network continues its outstanding coverage of NCAA football with a full slate of games in November. From California to Florida, it's the best football action from around the country, featuring national powers Florida State, Miami, Clemson, USC, Louisiana State, and West Virginia. Sunshine Network tips off its schedule of over 70 college basketball games with coverage of top in-state battles as Florida State hosts Central Florida and Florida International, while Stetson battles Bethune-Cookman. Sunshine Network is where you can catch the best high school football players in action. Watch the stars of tomorrow play today with coverage of four of the best high school games in Florida this month. Also coming up, the Central Collegiate Hockey Association, the Washington International Horse Show, Florida State Women's Volleyball, Men's World Pro Racquetball Tour action, live forum boxing, college football coaches shows, and much more in November on Sunshine Network.
Trackbeat, the sport's first and only national highlights television show, brings Greyhound racing into your own living room. Every month on the Trackbeat, you'll see exciting stakes races from the best tracks in the country. Our Trackbeat spotlight includes farm features, kennel features, trainer features, and racing rule features. We'll show you some of the sport's history-making events with our racing flashback and answer the most commonly asked questions regarding Greyhound racing. Stay tuned to the Sunshine Network for Greyhound Trackbeat. Now you can relive the greatest moments of LSU football with the amazing LSU Tiger Tales. That's right, this action-packed, high-quality one-hour video has it all. From Dietzel's national champions to the age of Arn Sparker, from the Chinese bandits to the Dalton James gang, Billy Cannon's legendary punt return to Burt Jones' last-second heroics. The amazing LSU Tiger Tales brings it all back to life on your VCR. And now capture the exciting 87 Tigers in a free 30-minute video when you order the amazing LSU LSU Tiger Tales. See head coach Mike Archer lead the Tigers to LSU's decisive Gator Bowl victory. To order your double tape set, just call 713-589-9113 or send check or money order for $39.95 plus $6 shipping to Amazing LSU Tiger Tales, P.O. Box 925067, Houston, Texas 77292. Visa MasterCard accepted, 713-589-9113. Call today. Relive the magic of Pistol Pete Maravich. Experience the nostalgia. Relive the glory years of college basketball's greatest star. Relive the wonder of Maravich memories. Maravich Memories, the LSU years. It's all here in this collector's video. Maravich heading to the right side with this one right in his face. Takes it near the corner. Goes up right high. Hang it shot. Oh, it's good. Maravich Memories, the LSU years. Only $39.95. Dial 1-800-262-2314. Now you can relive the memories. see the co-captains of both ball clubs down on the field. LSU trailing Kentucky 6-0 at halftime. And Burt Jones at halftime in the battle of statistics for whatever that's worth. LSU leads in total yardage 140 to 77. But where it really counts on that big uh, black scoreboard, LSU on the short end of a 6-0 count. That's correct, Lanny. And, and that's the only statistic that really counts right now. LSU has really not been effective. As you see, Pete Jenkins getting them fired up. And they need to be fired up. We've been put to sleep right here in the first half by our offense, and they've got to come through and effectively get the ball moving. Well, Pete Jenkins has done a fine job with that LSU defense. Bert, they have now go, gone 10 quarters without giving up a touchdown. Pete Jenkins is doing a superb job. LSU has got to get the ball up the field. Our passing game has not been effective. We have not put any pressure deep on these corners. I'm not saying throw the ball up the field deep. I'm not second guessing. I'm just saying that Kentucky has settled on our intermediate passes, and consequently, the intermediate passes are not open. We have to put pressure on the defensive series, secondaries with only three natural defensive backs back there. We've got to be able to move the ball effectively through the air. Carlton Buckles will kick off. And the deep man is Hunter. He's standing at the two-yard line. standing at the two. That's Rawls at the 12. He had a hole. Tripped up at the 45-yard line. 35-yard return. Jimmy Young on the tackle. And a great play by Jimmy Young, Lanny. He Boy, was that the last gone. man, and he had a blocker in his face at the time. Jimmy Young showed his superb athletic ability to even get near the ball carrier, much less make the tackle, which he did right there. Good field position for Kentucky. Well, it certainly is at their own 47-yard line. Four back in. Watch the throw. And he's got Hunter in LSU Tiger territory. 
territory at the 38-yard line. Check it, that's Bolden on the reception, 82 rather than 32, and credit him with a gain of 13 yards. Wildcats waste little time in getting in LSU territory. Len Four has a man in motion. And I don't believe he got the play off in time. I believe somebody moved in the line of scrimmage, Lenny, on that one. A couple of flags down, and I believe that will be the call, Bert. Illegal procedure. Nevertheless, same result, minus five. Five big ones here. Six nothing Kentucky. Hasn't been a lot of offense by either team. Has been zero offense by either team. Six points. Both came on big turnovers for Kentucky when they went down the field and kicked the, the two field goals. LSU has been absolutely ineffective, totally on offense. And the official attendance tonight, 71,418. 1433 to go third quarter. And the officials want to talk things over a little bit here and let's see what's uh, happening down on the field. Had a little trouble with the clock as the second quarter was drawing to a close. The referee is uh, talking to head coach Mike Archer right now. Bert, you just kind of look for the Tigers to explode, to come up with a big play in the first half, but it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. They looked rather lethargic out there. They've not done a whole lot on offense. Very effective on defense. Their clock is not working again. And you want to have a time X this in? I, do. I don't know. I, I know who is timing it. Jerry Klebert on the far side. He certainly had it timed as that second quarter was ticking down. And we're just about ready to go. Kentucky at the LSU 42-yard line as we look at the LSU bench. Four quarterback out of Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Hunter dives to the 40. He's got a couple, that's all. James and Hill on the right side for the Tigers of LSU making the stop on the play. Ivy Joe Hunter out of Gainesville, Florida, six foot, 218 pound senior, leading ball carrier coming in with 220 yards, four touchdowns. Florida's begun to produce some of the greatest ball players in our nation. out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Eric Hill and Daryl Phillips give chase. Glenn Four showing he's a versatile quarterback. Not only can he drop back and throw the ball, he hasn't been that effective throwing, but he has come over with a couple of big plays on the scramble. Bert, the Tigers had a good rush, but credit the secondary with some pretty good coverage downfield because initially he had some time. He had plenty of time. There was coverage. Third down and 10. At the Tiger 37. Four again to throw. Throws deep. Yes. And it's picked off at the 15-yard line. Jackson. He took a shot, but that was a great pass interception. Jackson back, see him reading the quarterback, look at his head, reading the quarterback, sees him turn left, goes to the ball, and collision. With his own teammate, Mike Mays. And Mays is down. Or dropping back, read the eyes of the quarterback is the job of the free safety, and he did just that, went to the ball, and made the big play. And Mays is still down. Greg Jackson, a preseason All-Southeastern Conference pick, and the lone returning starter in the LSU secondary. And Mays is still down. Mays last year, Burt was a headhunter. Boy, he was in on just about every tackle on special teams, earned himself a starting job, and he's done a good job for the LSU Tigers this year after earning that job. Very outstanding athlete. He does everything well. As you see him dropping back here, watch Jackson. He's reading the quarterback. He sees open up to the left side, goes that way with his eyes, and collides with Mays right there. Well, he 
Kelly's still down at the 13 yard line. That was quite a collision. Apparently just had the wind knocked out of him. Atlanta I had a fellow in the mind walk up from behind me. Jay Ben and Johnson just walked up from behind us. We have all kind of folks up here tonight. A lot of Tiger fans from all over the state. And all over the country. That's for sure. At the 15 yard line. Let's see what the Tigers can do. Their first offensive possession of the second half. Hudson to throw. Quick screen to Moss. He's going to reverse his field. He tries to turn the corner with that great speed, but he only gets back to the line of scrimmage and a good open field tackle by left side linebacker Chris Chenault. Bill Moss saw that there wasn't anything there, Burt, and with that great speed, tried to turn it uh, into a big one, but it was diagnosed beautifully by Chenault. This is the same first pass that we saw of the game. Tony Moss on a quick screen. Get the reception for the quarterback. Get Tommy Hodson, who is struggling now, back in the ball game. Second down and a long nine. Hodson again to throw. He's got the time, but the coverage is there. Boy, Kentucky has done a job in the secondary. Hodson had all day. Moss came back to the football and manages to pick up about four yards on the play. Moss was at about the 25. Bert, he retreated all the way back to the 15 to help out Tom Hudson. And that is exactly what I was talking about earlier. If you could only see downfield, everybody settles at that 10 to 12 to 15 yard area and everyone's covered. Nobody's open anywhere. Nobody's deep, nobody's short. Moss comes all the way back from a 10 yard pattern to make the catch, make the reception. We've got to put some pressure on them sometime up. Third down at the Tiger 19. Hudson again to throw. He looks, he shoots, and it's complete. And that's Fuller coming out of the backfield. And the Tigers have a first down. David Johnson ran him out of bounds. Mr. Everything, Fuller turning into a complete running back. Tommy Hudson dropping back. Looking for his man, a combination route over here with one man clearing the zone out. Fuller coming underneath. First down. Eddie Fuller, seventh in rushing in the Southeastern Conference, and Burt also seventh in receiving. So Hodson has gone to him many times coming out of the backfield. First and 10, LSU at the Tiger 27. Fuller tries the left side. He's down at the 30 after a gain of about two. Donnie Gardner on the tackle. And they're the Tiger cheerleaders. 13-31 to go, third quarter. Tolbert checks out of the ball game. And Lee comes back in. Well, we've had our... Troubles with the timepieces tonight. Understand the 25 second clock is also inoperative. Eight yards to go at the 30 yard line. Tom Hodson directing traffic. Short drop this time over the middle. And it's complete to Alvin Lee to the 36 yard line. Chenault on the tackle. the Tigers starting to go some underneath stuff. Well, they've been going with it all evening. They need to get the ball up Phil here. Of course, they had two plays to get the first down. They almost pick it up here, brings up a third and short. As they let a man clear, throws to the underneath man. Third down, and about a foot to go for the first down. 13-31 to go, third quarter. in motion. That's Williams. And he appears to have the first down at about the 39-yard line. Bert, you talked about those intermediate passes. I felt like the last one was a little bit shorter, but why haven't the Tigers gone deep? Is that what they need to do, need to, do to open this thing up a little bit? Well, it's a whole lot easier to pass judgment not having studied the game plan, looked at the film. They're effective in what they've been doing, but I don't see Kentucky respecting the deep pass. Not that we have to get a bomb in, but we need to clear them out because they're all settling right there. First and 10 motion. At the 39. Hudson again. At the 
45-yard line in heavy traffic. Tony Massey made the tackle. And that was Fuller again. Massey made the stop. And it's going to be another uh, gain of about five or six yards. Let's see where they mark it at the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Kentucky leads LSU 6-0. Tigers outgained them in the first half, but they did not gain a lot. 140-something yards. High formation. Pitch back, Fuller. Got a good block from Williams. Close to the first down, but a little bit shy. Mark Sellers, the weak safety, came up rapidly to make the tackle on the play. Just a little bit shy of the first down. Third and short once again for the LSU Tigers. Hudson, senior quarterback out of Matthews, trying to get a little spark going in the sputtering Tiger offense. Third down and about a foot. There's Williams. He's got the first down and more and into Kentucky territory at about the 47-yard line. Well, that brings the crowd to life a little bit. Good block by Rodriguez and Norwood on the left side. And the partisan crowd hollering for the Tigers to go. And it's about time as the Tiger offense is starting to show a little life now as they've moved it all the way down to the 46-yard line from their own 20. Actually, the 15. moves one of the setbacks. Hodgson's got the time. Williams, he's down to the 42-yard line. Tony Massey. Bert, I am amazed at the difficulty the Tigers have had in getting people open downfield. He's had some time. The offensive line's doing the job. He's had to go to the safety valve numerous occasions. He has done that. Uh, they're getting that deep drop, settling there, and you either have to take it way upfield, put some pressure on them, or take the relief valve. And of course, second and five and a half is not a bad position to be in. That's a good position pass on the first down. Tigers at the 42. Hudson again to throw. Pops one time. Goes to Williams. Good open field tackle by Tony Massey at the 40-yard line. Tigers will still be about four yards shy of a first down. It'll be third and about four. 13-20, clock is running in the third quarter, and Williams is shaken up on the play. And you see the all-important trainers. Birdie and Anderson right there, two fouls. He's okay. Third down. A short four at the 40-yard line in Kentucky Wildcat territory. Tom Hudson leading the Tigers on a third down and four. Big play for LSU. They have trailed the entire ball game. Victor Jones checks with Hudson. Tommy to throw, in trouble. He's going to be sacked back on the 46-yard line. And coming through there, right end Jay Dortch. And that's the second time tonight that the Wildcats have gotten to Tom Hudson. Check it, three sacks tonight for 21 yards in losses. Jay Dortch will be coming from the top of the screen. Victor Jones has him one-on-one. -on -one. That's the confusion they'll create by having all those men as defensive ends, defensive linebackers. Leaves the back one-on-one -on, -one on a bigger than normal linebacker, which makes it tough. It's a mismatch. Colbert is a deep man. Griffith's kick, and that's going to go out of bounds at about the four-yard line, and that is a beautiful punt. 
then we turn the corner, Land, and we look for a break that maybe will send LSU on its way. And this may be it. 42 yard punt by Brian Griffith. Griffith, of course, as we said earlier, is the pooch punter. He heads for the uh, corner, and he is very adept at doing that. That couldn't have come at a better time. The pooch punter. Well, that end of the field likes defense, as we saw against AM, and are they into this ball game? There's Griffith after that great punt. Ooh, they almost fumbled the ball. Tigers stop him at the four yard line. Not much there for Hunter. Hill, fine linebacker for LSU and Clint James. Bird, if they can stop him right here without a first down, the Tigers will get the ball back in good field position. Which will be the first time in a while. They'll be going with it then. And I think they'll have a little momentum. The defense continues to hold it. Need to do it again right now. Second down and ten. Four in the end zone. Pass and it's complete. Out to the 14-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. Darrington on the reception. He's the tight end. Osbury on the tackle. That was a fine play. They're coming out of the eye. It's a sprint, run or pass. Tight ends open in the seam. Four gets it to him, makes a catch, and looks like the ball is almost loose there. Well, they bring the chain gang in from across the way. Stretch it out. Four thinks it's a first down. And I think he's, he's got it. Signaling to the sidelines to get away from the coach that's sending the signals to me. First down and ten. Terrible way to do things, but when we were playing in Baltimore, we would film the defensive coach when he sent the signals in. A lot of people didn't know that, and I would know a lot of their defensive secondary coverages and line calls just by knowing how they I would read their coverage as well by that. Uh-huh. Man in motion, near side. Murray across the 15 to about the 18-yard line. in on that one. 11 10 to go third quarter. Kentucky leading six to nothing. They have led since the first quarter. And Burt really the Tigers haven't been that close. They haven't been close at all. Four rolls left. He's going to keep it. And he runs out of bounds at the 24-yard line, just a little bit shy of the first down. And chase given by Eric Hill, right outside linebacker, six foot two, 256-pound senior out of Galveston. Same play that you saw him going the other way, coming out of the end zone. It's just an eye roll where he has the option to throw the ball to Darrington, the tight end down the field, but he elects that there's a soft corner there. Let's take it and go, and he moves the ball almost 10 yards, picks up. It to be almost an apparent first down. They're coming in with the measurement now. Well, he had gotten a, a little bit shy of the marker on the near side, but of course the accurate one is on the far side, and it was enough for a first down. So that's two big first downs for Kentucky as they were playing in the shadow of their own goal line back in the four-yard line. First down, Kentucky. Two big plays by the Wildcats. Eleven minutes, eight seconds to go. First and ten, Kentucky at their own 25. Flags are down as Rawls gets to about the 28-yard line. That is a big no-no. Never have a flanker illegal procedure moving towards the line of scrimmage on a run of all things. Ron Sancho made the tackle. And the Tigers, I think, will wipe out that gain and back them up a little bit. And it'll be a first down and 15 if the Tigers take the penalty, and they're going to back on the 20-yard line. Rawls is an interesting story. He only has 196 yards, Burt, coming in, but he got 137 in 10 carries against Alabama. Hasn't done much before or since. I understand he's been hurt uh, at the start of the season, but he obviously has some talent because it's pretty tough to run against Alabama. He has a lot of talent, as the 
SID from Kentucky said he was hurt, had a knee operation. And the clock is uh, stuck once again. Four over the middle in the hands and out of Ivy Joe Hunter. And he just dropped that one. You can't go at all without the ball. Mike Merla with the coverage on the play. Totally second and 15. Tiger defense trying to get the Kentucky team bottled up down there, but Kentucky has done a pretty good job in moving that football out of the uh, shadow of their goalpost. Four. There's the quarterback draw. That is diagnosed beautifully. Darrell Phillips. Boy, what a ball game he's played in those guards. 34 tackles coming into tonight's game. Six foot, 255 pound senior out of Franklin. So now it's going to be a big third down and 15 at the 20 yard line. Glenn James and Eric Hill. Kentucky only two of 10 in third down conversions. crowd once again. Four seems to be hurt. He left the ball game. Out of the shotgun. Quick, quick. Kick. Block. It's blocked. Tigers will get it. Chuck Broughton, the quarterback. a break the Tigers needed. Broughton kicked it right into the back of Ivy Joe Hunter. It was not blocked by one of the LSU players, but it doesn't matter. The result's the same. Correct, but it was a third down. But since they kicked the ball, they're going to need to get a ruling. It now becomes fourth down, and they will punt the ball. Well, that is a big break for Kentucky. The Tigers didn't come up with it, but they blocked this one on their own. How about that? Ron Sancho, Burt, that is unbelievable. And they tried to do it in a hurry. Quite often when you come out with no huddle, get to the ball, but so far, something happens big. This time it was not to the advantage of Kentucky. Ron Sancho coming up with the play of the game thus far. Possible personal foul against Kentucky, which will compound the injury here. Well, the Tigers almost got to him on third down, and they did get to him on fourth down. Big break for LSU, and this may be the one that the Tigers need, as they have trailed the entire ball game. And Tommy Hodson needs to put the sleeper hold on Kentucky right now. in his own end zone. Quick count. No huddle. Ron Sancho comes through. Big play. Catches the tip of the ball. Well, he got one of those hands up there. And Tigers with a first and goal inside the 10. Let's see if Hodson can get him in. Hodson to Fuller. To the five. He's got the touchdown. the crowd to life. Split six, counter play. You see both the offside guard and tackle pull and lead through the hole. Four knows where the goal line is, puts his nose at the grindstone and gets it. Great block by Packnett. Brown Dyke to convert. He's made 69 in a row as an LSU Tiger. Make that 70. It's time out on the field. The LSU Tigers lead Kentucky 7-6. Baton Rouge stations, Baton Rouge Air Ambulance Helicopter, and a Louisiana-wide support staff of 400 employees. 
every time. Ambulance transport of over 12,500 Baton Rouge patients last year alone. Everywhere. In 20 Louisiana parishes. Acadian Ambulance Services. Football standby is performed as a community service by Acadian Ambulance. Well, let's look at it again. Eddie Fuller takes it in from nine yards out, and finally the Tigers have gotten on the board, and more importantly, Burt Jones, they've got the lead. Yes, it's a counterplay. Both the guard and the tackle pull it. Pagnet comes up through the hole, leads right there. Comes right on through. You see Norwood leading the way, and Fuller knows where the goal line is. Quite a complete ball player there. Good receiver, excellent running back, good speed, does it all, and has really been LSU's offense. 16 carries, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Ivy Joe Hunter, and Bill Sheehan, the deep man. Hunter at the five. To the 30. Good return of 26 yards. But the key to it all, Lanny, has been the ability, as we see Mickey Guidry warming up, for the LSU defense to keep the game under control, not let it get away. When the breaks happen against them, stopping them. When they have to, come up with a big play and give the ball to offense on the 10-yard line. Well, that's exactly what they did. Four wants to throw long. He's got a man open. He's going to go all the way. John Bolden, 70 yards. Kentucky comes up with a bomb. Well, it didn't take long as Kentucky has stunned this crowd. And let's look at it again. Or drop back on this play. It's a roll-up zone. He hits him between the corner and the safety. Jackson just misjudged the ball, tried to go for the tip ball. But he was down past him. Touchdown. There's no one behind you. Well, Bolden had such a lead that nobody could catch it. And Kentucky is going to go for two. Kentucky back in the lead at 12-7. And just that quickly, Kentucky is back in the lead. Four rolls right, zips the pass, incomplete. Jimmy Young got a hand on it. We got a flag down at the nine yard line. And they might have gotten to the quarterback. They did, they're, I believe they're gonna call it roughing the passer right here. Which gives them another opportunity for a two point play. Just a little bit closer. And you can see the displeasure with Daryl Phillips. Not very happy about that call. Now let's take a look at what happened. Watch the lower right hand corner of your screen. There it was coming from the blind side. Hits four. It didn't look like it was that late. the pass or the call so Kentucky Kentucky will get another shot at it from about a yard and a half away and it appears they had more than one two-point conversion plays because I believe they're spotting the ball back in the middle of the field this time and Kentucky wants to uh, talk things over here this could be a big play for them and give them a touchdown lead at 14-7. Boy, they have stunned this crowd as the crowd had really started to get into the ball game, and that 70-yard bomb has really dampened things right here. Once again, you see four on the play-action pass. Good play, good call, good execution. Greg Jackson went for the football, Bert. He and was, he had no help behind him. He, he did. He's a, he was the furthest man back. It was a bad decision. He thought he probably read the ball that time, but Ford has the good arm as we spoke earlier. He kept the ball low and hard, and he got it in there. 
incidentally, the clock is inoperative, and we really do not know how much time is left here in the third quarter of the ball game. Mike Archer talking to the official. Well, the Tigers fought back made their own break, got the lead, and just with the blink of an eyelash, Kentucky has taken the lead right back. Listen to the crowd as it gets louder. Four, hands on, no. Murray. He did not make it. Great defensive charge led by the LSU Tigers up front. Dunbar was in on the tackle. Along with Mike Murla. Great defensive charge, Bert. And a big play. It's time out on the field with a score. Kentucky 12, LSU 7. Greyhound Track Beat, the sport's first and only national highlights television show, brings Greyhound Racing into your own living room. Every month on the Track Beat, you'll see exciting stakes races from the best tracks in the country. Our Track Beat spotlight includes farm features, kennel features, trainer features, and racing rule features. We'll show you some of the sport's history-making events with our racing flashback and answer the most commonly asked questions regarding Greyhound Racing. Stay tuned to the Sunshine Network for Greyhound Track Beat. What would it be like to play in a pro-am with Tom Watson? If you see anything, I can improve, Tom, just to speak up. You have to turn your back to the target every time you make a full swing. Well, thanks, Tom. You got any more pointers? The best one of all. You get a lesson every month. Golf Digest. Call 800-351-4700 for a full year of Golf Digest for $12.77. 46% off the cover price. Order now and also get golf lessons from the pros free. Call 800-351-4700. Ray, I have a wheelchair here that came from space. You're kidding, Isaac. No, try and lift it. Oh, it's light as a feather. Well, perhaps a heavy feather. It's made from super light material developed for space vehicles. Weighs half what a standard chair weighs, and it's just as strong. Must be a lot easier to maneuver, fold, and store away. Exactly. Well, on that note, I'd say it's another down-to-earth benefit from space. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. LSU 12-7. That is the first touchdown that the defense has given up in the last 11 quarters. And it was just on one big, quick play. And nothing deserved, might we say. No Ken Willis, about Ken Willis, Burt, will kick off to Wayne Williams and Vincent Fuller. Seven, Kentucky. Here's the kickoff. To the 20. Great return. All the way to the 35-yard line. 27-yard return. Touchdown for the Tigers at the 30-yard line. Let's watch that touchdown again. Personally, I don't like to see it anymore. <laughs> That's enough times. Once again, Jackson misjudges the ball. Gets it right between the safety and the corner. And if you go down, there's no one behind you. That's why I never wanted to be a, a safety. Boy, when you mess up there, everybody sees it. Flag is down. And it appears that procedure is going to be the call assessed against the Tigers of LSU, and it appeared to be Williams. So that'll back him up to the 25-yard line. Bird, it's been an unusual football game. There just hasn't been any continuity at all as we see Guidry back in there, but neither team has really been able to generate any semblance of an offensive drive for more than 30 or 40 yards. Not at all, just two big plays. Block punt and that long touchdown pass. First and 15, Gidry gets a chance, runs the option. Here comes Fuller. 
bowls his way across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Credit Barnett and Massey with a... Well, there's a dimension that you see when Guidry's in the ball game, Bert. This is true. Mickey Guidry is a pretty good, complete college quarterback. See, it's kind of a counter delay where he comes down the line, gets an opportunity to get a little bit of that in front of him, pitches the ball off, but it's only a gain of two yards. Second down and about nine. Pitch back to Fuller. Across the 35 and down to about the 33. Barnett again, and we have called his name many times. He has been a force defensively for the Kentucky Wildcats tonight. 6'3", 285, a junior from Louisville. That's true, and he's playing over Hutchinson now. Pagnett is out of the game, and he's coming all the way from the backside. It's hard to get that cutoff block when he goes down the line of scrimmage like that, but it's critical, especially if your running back is prone to cutting against the grain. You've got to get those legs down, chopped down on the defensive line. Third down, a long three. LSU at their own 36-yard line. Gidry wants to throw. Incomplete, intended for Fuller, and he thought he was interfered with as Holleran hit him. And he was. It was one of these. Let's see if you call it. I think I'll call it. But we both know it's pass interference. But there looks like there may be two flags down in two different places on the field, which means that there's another penalty. And it looks like this one's against LSU, which means it's all set and we'll try it again. Let's do it over. Third down and three. Kentucky is guilty of cats and birds. And that would have given the Tigers a first down, but their own infraction negated the pass interference call. That's the end of the ball. Well, we can't tell it by the clock, but we heard it over the loudspeaker that we have played three quarters. LSU led it for a little while, a total of about 12 seconds as timeout on the field. At the end of three, Kentucky leads LSU 12-7. Tiger fans, tickets for every LSU home football game are available now at Mason Blige Ticketmaster. Enjoy all the action live in Tiger Stadium. Check your newspaper for the Mason Blige Ticketmaster outlet nearest you or order by phone. Call 504-336-5000 and have your charge card ready. The excitement of Tiger football is waiting for you at Mason Blige Ticketmaster, your ticket to the best seats in town. Jones, we're into the home stretch now, and it's do or die. It's the fourth quarter. This is when you get down and get tough. Let's see if the Tigers can do it. Well, they did it last week. I think they can do it again. I think this offense responds best when the pressure is on. Let's just tell them the pressure is on now. Let's don't wait till two minutes. What do you say? I, that makes a lot more sense. A lot better on the blood pressure for sure. Third down and three. LSU at their own 36-yard line. break huddle and move up to the line. Lead to the near side. Fuller in the slot. Just one running back. Behind Mickey Gidry. Gidry, draw play. Great call. First down, LSU at the 44. That caught Kentucky by surprise. Excellent play. Drop back. Give him an opportunity to get in those zones, in those zones backing it up. Mickey Gidry turns it up the field. Tigers with a first down. LSU trails 12-7. At the Tiger 44. Gidry, little counter play to Fuller. Good run. Good tough run to the 49-yard line. And Fuller, after a slow start, finally having a pretty good night. And a flag is down. And that is dumb. At the 42-yard line. Jim Hubix, I believe the call is going to go against him. But let's face it. I think most of the action tonight has really been down in those trenches, Bert. They have really had a battle in that forward wall. 
It has, but when you're not in the trenches and you're out in the open, never do you swing your arms as if you're trying to punch. Even though Kentucky's defensive lineman was holding Hubix down, you still can't get up swinging. Bird, it's usually the guy that retaliates that gets caught. It's always the guy. And that'll cost the Tigers back to their own 34-yard line. It'll be second down and about 19. Split backs behind Gidry, the senior out of Gretna. Gidry with the option play. Pitches back to Fuller. Across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. Barnett and Massey. That side, for the most part, Burt has been extremely tough to run against tonight. We have called those two guys' numbers many times tonight, Barnett and Massey. This is true. Seems as though most of the time it's when we run away from them. But you can see they're equally as tough when you run to them. Chenault is down on the field right now. And we look at Rene Bourgeois. Leading punter in the Southeastern Conference. And he may be called upon here in just a moment. Chenault shaken up. And he apparently is going to leave the field under his own steam. As we look at some of the LSU fans, 71,000 tonight. Clock says 13.43 to go, Bert. We'll have to take a quick look at it and see if it's accurate as it's been in operative for most of the night. It appears as though they have it back working. They start the clock again, and it works. For the moment, at least. 12-7, Kentucky. LSU, big down. Third and 16. Gidry drops straight back. Steps up in the pocket. Fires over the middle. Intended for Moss. And getting a hand on that football, Chris Tolbert. And Moss would have had the first down. Just at the last second, Tolbert stuck a hand in there and broke it up. Nicky Gidry gets back, looks down the field. Tony Moss coming all the way from the left side, all the way across the field, deep crossing pattern. And, oh, it was just the fingertips that got it there. Bourgeois, a kick from about the 27. He's standing on the 23. Tolbert is a deep man. And that's going to be a pretty good kick as it goes out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. 43 yards. And let's take a look at uh, what happened in the Southeastern Conference today. Alabama over Tennessee, 28-20. Johnny Major's having a tough year. Auburn rolls over Akron, 42 to nothing. Florida, there's the upset of the day in the SEC. Vanderbilt, 24 to nine. Big surprise. Ole Miss a tough time with Arkansas State, 25-22. Southern Mississippi over Mississippi State, 38-21. Up across the 25 to about the 26-yard line, Jamie Bice making the tackle on Alfred Rawls. 12 minutes and 55 seconds to go. Kentucky at the 26-yard line with a second down and three. There's Jerry Claiborne. Sunshine Network continues its outstanding coverage of NCAA football with a full slate of games in November. From California to Florida, it's the best football action from around the country, featuring national powers Florida State, Miami, Clemson, USC, Louisiana State, and West Virginia. Sunshine Network tips off its schedule of over 70 college basketball games with coverage of top in-state battles as Florida State hosts Central Florida and Florida International, while Stetson battles Bethune-Cookman. Sunshine Network is where you can catch the best high school football players in action. Watch the stars of tomorrow play today with coverage of four of the best high school games in Florida this month. 
Also coming up, the Central Collegiate Hockey Association, the Washington International Horse Show, Florida State Women's Volleyball, Men's World Pro Racquetball Tour action, live forum boxing, college football coaches shows, and much more in November on Sunshine Network. Good defensive play by Carl Dunbar. Got back to about the 25, and that's all. And Darrell Phillips is down on this play. Coming out of the game, Mike Archer, I'm sure, looking in his direction. Ford dropping back here, gets the ball deep to the handoff. But there's nothing there. Phillips shaking up on the play. But he leaves under his own steam. He's standing on the sideline at the 32-yard line. Third down and three. Here's the pass. 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 Option pass. Wide open down the field. He didn't catch it. At the 37-yard line, that would have been a big play. Bolden, the man that took the 70-yard bomb, couldn't get to the football. Murray on the halfback option, and that could have been a big play. Once again, this is another one of those tricks I'm sure they worked on for the last two weeks. See a running back with good ability throws a dying duck out there. Bolden almost comes up with the play. Good concentration, almost makes it on the second try. If that had been thrown snap, to the outside, look. and it's going to be a loose one. There's another break for the Tigers of LSU as Nelson could not handle the high snap. Once again, the Tigers get the football in beautiful field position. Well, the kicking game has hurt Kentucky, and it's hurt them twice, big time. Well, it certainly has given LSU the opportunity now to go ahead again. The only score LSU's made came from the kicking game. And LSU at the 13, Burke. And back in. LSU at the Kentucky 13. Fuller to the 11-yard line, and that's all. It worked once. Try it again. It's that same counterplay with the guard and the tackle pulling down the line of scrimmage, leading up through the hole. Guard trapping out on the end, tackle leading through the hole. Doug Hauser made the tackle. Second down and a long eight, just shy of the 11-yard line. 11.30 to go. Kentucky leads LSU. They have led for most of the ball game. 12-7. Can the Tigers get it in? High formation. Here's Fuller. To the 10. And that play was made by number 98, Jerry Bell. Fuller wanted to cut it up. Bell got a piece of him, held him up long enough for help to arrive. That's true. Indecision on Fuller's part right there. Coming around, Tommy Hudson getting the ball back deep to Fuller, looking to maybe go outside, cuts it inside. But there he is, standing in the hole. Brings up third and a long five yards. Well, the Tigers need to get it to about the three. Maybe even further than that. That's right. Third actually in about seven. Hudson, 11 of 16, 104 yards. Hudson looking over, open, in the corner, touchdown. wide open is Tony Moss. That looked easy. But it hasn't thus far tonight. It hasn't been that easy. Going for two, he was wide open. It was the old give and go, basketball screen play. Ball's going all the way across the field from the slot. And Burke, Tommy kind of set him up as he looked left, looked left, went back to the right, and he was wide open. 
And that shows you Hudson's good vision of the field because he not only was looking left, he was thinking left. Two-point conversion coming up. Tigers go for two. They've got the lead at 13-12. Hudson in the corner. Incomplete. Almost had it. Little fade route. Ron Robinson made the hit. And that appeared to be Alvin Lee. And the Tigers almost had the two, but that was timed beautifully by Ron Robinson. So with 10.32 to go in the game, LSU leads Kentucky 13 to 12. Tigers haven't had a lot of opportunities, but when they get them, they cash them into touchdowns. It's been the difference of the game. They have. As you see, Tommy Hudson dropping back here. Tony Moss is in the slot on your left side, coming all the way across the field. Man coverage. His man gets lost in the shuffle and doesn't make it. Here you see one-on-one -on -one coverage going to Lee over the shoulder. That is a tough play to get execution on. Here's the kickoff at the five. Hunter tripped up, and he gets back to about the 23-yard line. And two flags are Tackle down. made by Tony Houston, a 19-yard return, and flags are down at the 26-yard line. feeling the Tigers might be a little bit wary here because the last time LSU got the lead, Kentucky came right back with a 70-yard bomb. If they're not, they're slow learners. Flipping against Kentucky, and that'll back them up. On the run back. Coming from behind right there. Mike Meese on that clip. Kentucky at the 12, and listen to the crowd. Four to throw. Did he get his feet down? No, he's out of bounds. Good catch by Bolden, but he couldn't get that foot down. Jimmy Young with the coverage for LSU. And that very well could have been the same play as the one they scored the touchdown on because on the one the touchdown was scored on, it was a roll-up zone, which quite often for an out goes into an up on that defense for a lot of people. There was the out on a single zone, and he went ahead and took it to the out, caught it out of bounds, but that could very well have been the same play had they rolled up the zone because then you try to hit it in between the defensive backs. Much different result that time. And the Tigers, Carl Dunbar jumps across and makes contact, but they saw motion against Kentucky, and Kentucky knows it. They're backing up. 10.06 to go in the ball game. LSU leading in a hard-fought, hard-hitting Southeastern Conference game over Kentucky. LSU by one at 13 to 12. Kentucky at the seven-yard line. Bert, you said it coming in. We talked about them. They're big and physical. They're a lot better than that two and three record would indicate. They certainly are, but as their history has been in the past, they seem to lose it late in the third and fourth quarter. Well, let's see if history repeats. Four to throw. It's complete to the 20-yard line, and he tries to scramble to about the 21. Bolden on the reception, and he appears to be about a yard shy of the first down, but that was a big completion of 13 yards. Osbury made the tackle. So it's Excellent going to be third receiver. and one, Bert. Yes, he is. Third and one. Well, the Tigers getting the help from the crowd of 71,000. 
pitch back. Hunter, no. I don't think he made it. Let's see where they spot it. He appeared to only get to about the 21. It depends very much on the spot, and it appears to be a little bit shy. I think the Tigers have done it. Referee's taking a close look at it. From our vantage point, he appears to be a little bit shy. Rudy Harmon made the hit. Bird, I hate to guess, but it looks to me like he's a few inches shy. We're going to know in a minute. Big third down play. They're not even going to measure. The Tiger defense did it. Four pitches back. The whole defensive line right there stops the push. Nelson will kick it away. the 40-yard line. Jimmy Young calls for the fair catch but lets it hit and it goes laterally out of bounds at the Tiger 46. We got another flag down back in the 20-yard line only 33 yards on the punt. And the officials want to talk this one over. And it looks like it may be against us, which will be a first down. Now, those are the kind of penalties that really upset a coach. Personal foul. And the Tigers have been hit with a couple of those tonight, Bert. Eighteen, eight, eight, eighteen to go in the ball game. LSU up by only one at 13 to 12. That's what it is. Big penalty. Defense stopped him. Our special teams have played very well tonight, considering that they blocked the punt for the same position. So instead of LSU's ball at their own 46, Kentucky's got it first and 10 at their own 36. Costly penalty. Four. Draw play to Hunter. He's got a couple to about the 38-yard line, and that's going to be just about all. There's Mike the Tiger. That little guy's having fun. He certainly is. Says LSU and Mike the Tiger, number one. Gain of a couple. Second down, eight yards to go. Kentucky at their own 38-yard line. the senior quarterback wants to throw lost the pass downfield the Tigers have a shot at it but it's out of bounds great rush by Daryl Phillips and that's what caused that incompletion that is correct Daryl Phillips has been everywhere tonight four is dropping back play action pass on third and long rather unusual but Phillips is right there Almost has him, throws the ball way out of play. You see Ford's good arm. He threw it 35 yards down the field, out of bounds, falling backwards. Well, that was some effort by Phillips. He has really played his heart out tonight in nose guard. Four wants to throw over the middle. It's complete to the 44-yard line, and it appears to be about a yard shy of the first down. Rudy Harmon made the tackle on Ivy Joe Hunter coming out of the backfield. Coming back. Relying on that play action. Actually, it's really just a drop back. It just allows that running back a way to get through the line to get in the pass secondary so that he can catch a secondary pass, but it wasn't enough for him that time. Nelson to punt. Jimmy Young all by his lonesome. Fair catch of the 20. 35 yard punt. LSU takes over, 6.53 to go. Obert, the Tigers certainly need a little insurance right here. They need to move the ball. They have not had a sustained drive all evening, and they have to reestablish the fact that they can do it, as we said early on. The defense can't hold them forever, especially if you let Kentucky stay in the game to the end. Bert, you can't say enough about that Tiger defense. They have really done the job. They've been out there a lot tonight, and they've come up with some big, big plays. They certainly have. Tom Hodson leads the Tigers at the Tiger 20. 
Fakes the counter. Wants the throw. And it's complete at about the 29-yard line. That's Williams on the reception. Looks like a gain of about nine. And that's a big gain for first down. Brings up a second and short. And, Bert, you can do just about anything you want to right here. Yes, but the thing they need to do is get this first down. 627 and counting. Sustain a drive here is what they really need. Hudson. Hands off. Big hit, but Williams has got the first down and more as he gets to about the 32. Holleran on the stop. First down of the Tigers. That brings a big response. Both of the Tiger touchdowns came on very short drives. Let's look at it again. When you hear those helmets hit together like that, you know it's tough football. Kentucky is physical, and equally so is LSU. They spotted at the 31. Pitch back to Fuller. Got a little room. Puts that head down and pulls to the 39-yard line. Mick Adams made the tackle. What a nice cut by Fuller there. You saw him stringing it out, bringing it out, getting that pursuit to move with him, and then he breaks it back to the inside there. Fuller does just a tremendous job. He has matured into a fine running back. And north and south, Bert, he's so strong. He turns it up the field and usually gains two or three more after he's been hit. Second down and a long two. LSU at the Tiger 38. There's a view from the end zone. Fuller again. Tries to slide to the outside. Gets to about the 40, maybe the 41. Hollering again, the left side linebacker for Kentucky. He's been a busy man. 6'1", 233 pounds, sophomore. Forty-five to go. 93 yards for Fuller on 24 carries, and he's nearing that 100-yard mark. And the important thing with that, Bird, is it enables the Tigers to control the football. Which they haven't done up until this time very effectively. Third, Third short. Very short. And that appeared to be Roger Hutchinson playing in relief of Robert Packnett. I don't know if Packnett was hurt. I saw him on the sideline a moment ago, Bird, and he appeared to be all right. He might have just uh, gotten a little tired or just getting some relief from Hutchinson, but... That's going to be a procedure call against the red shirt freshman tackle. 6'6", 295 pounder out of Gonzalez. And that can be a very big play. Hutchinson, number 71, at the top of the screen. It's loud out there. He hasn't had that much experience, obviously. And actually, the defensive end drew him off sides. Burke, that's just a little of experience right there. Hudson out of the shotgun. He's got the time. Goes the pass. And it's complete to about the 41-yard line. I don't know if he got it or not. And it depends on the spot. Out of the shotgun. Eddie Fuller, you see him out here deployed to the side. Didn't hear the snap count. Straight up the field, looking for an open place. Comes back to the ball, which is good, but this time, I'm afraid it brought him just a hair short of the first down. Well, let's see how good the old quarterback's eyes are. As we I stretch hope I am wrong. But they stretch it down there. Well, we can't see it. It's obscured by the uh, sideline. Boy, you have got good eyes. About two inches, I think. Tigers thought they had it. Fuller certainly did. There you see the numbers on the junior running back from Leesville. And he has turned into a fine player and a clutch player, as we saw last week when he caught the winning pass against Auburn with a minute and 41 seconds to go. Mike Archer trying to get that record up to 14-3-1, but it has been an uphill struggle against Kentucky tonight. And in to punt the football, Brian, or check it, Number 17, Rene Bourgeois, and he's averaged 46 yards tonight. Hasn't hurt his average at all. 
fifth leading putter in the Southeastern Conference. Tolbert standing at the 20 yard line. 3.57 to go. Here's the kick and he really hits this one all the way back to the six yard line to the five. Good open field tackle at the 13 yard line. That was Bice hustling downfield to make the tackle. 52 yard punt and a five yard return. Burt Jones, that could not have come at a better time. At a better time. It was a low line drive kick. Drove him back. He makes a move, gets past this first wave, and actually had a hole had Bice not gotten in there. You're Trying absolutely open right. Tackle. Could have been a big play. And was for us. Kentucky at the 14. Four to throw. Incomplete. Tigers with good coverage on the play. And the nearest man to that football appeared to be Greg Jackson. Second down and 10. 3.41 to go. Well, Kentucky has led throughout most of the ball game. First time LSU got the lead, they only had it for 12 seconds as Kentucky came back with a 70-yard bomb. But the Tiger defense has really settled down since that point. Four in trouble. The flag is down. Pass knocked up the oh. Almost picked off. Great try by Greg Jackson. Intended for Bolden. But a flag is down at the four-yard line. In the area of offensive holding. And it is. Well, what do you do, Lanning? I got a feeling they'll turn it down. But I don't know. Be third and ten. Or second and twenty. No. Second about 15 to only get half the distance from there. And they're turning it down. So it'll be third down, 10 or, yards to go. Or dropping back, you'll see his good arm, but sometimes it's a little too good. A little bit high. Jackson almost makes the play. Third and 10. This may be it for the Wildcats. Four over the middle. Broken up. Appeared to be Jimmy Young has got a hand in there. Clint James really put the pressure on four. 325 to go. And defense once again does it. Clint four backing up. There you see James right in his face. Actually possibly tipped the ball. As the, the ball after hitting the receiver hit three LSU defenders. Weiss with a good hit. Nelson to punt. High snap. He's got to go back into the end zone. Tigers running out of the end zone. And that should be a safety. And it is. And a smart play by the punter. John Childers really put the heat on him. So the kicking game has killed Kentucky tonight. Once again, a high snap. Picks it up. Tried to run it out, it would have given LSU the ball on the one or two yard line. Quick thinking punter takes it out of the end zone, gives up the safety, which makes it a three point deficit, which means that Kentucky still with a field goal can tie it, but with a touchdown would virtually be out of the game completely. Well, you're right, Bert. That was a heads up play by Nelson. Here it is again. I'm not sure he did it out of smarts or fear, but whatever the case, the result was good for Kentucky in that they didn't give up. LSU might have the ball on the one. You hate to give up a safety, but it's better than the alternative, I believe, in that situation. 318. This has been a bizarre night of football, to say the least. All the Tiger points have been virtually as a direct result of miscues of the Kentucky punting game. With the exception of making your own breaks by the LSU defense and their special teams. Well, Bert, that pressure has kept Kentucky deep, enabling them to come up with the big plays. So Kentucky will kick the football from the 20-yard line. 
Couple of first downs. And LSU can put this one away. But it's far from being over. It's been a tough football game. This is an unusual play in that instead of after a safety, the Kentucky team punting the ball away, they're going to kick it from a tee. Normally they like to punt it because of the hang time. Plus, it may be an onside kick attempt. But no, he kicks it away. But this guy has a leg. Now I understand. It's not that unusual. Jackson from the 16. Oh, he almost breaks it to the 42-yard line. 26-yard return. So the Tigers with three minutes and nine seconds to go. You see Jackson going back was a big leg by that kicker. That was a fine kick. And he sees a seam right here, almost gets through it. And he, and he made it past that. There was nothing but strikes in front of him. Tiger special team did a good job in blocking up front. There are the numbers on Tom Hudson. Fuller having a good night. He gets the call. It turns what started out as nothing, and they never did bring him down with a at about the 43-yard line. He's a tough runner. He is that. And a good receiver, a good all-around back. Well, that will net about two at the 45. Two minutes, 43 seconds, and counting. Tigers trying to hold on and pull off their fourth victory of the season. that little counter to Fuller. It's been a good play tonight, but not this time, as he only gets a couple to about the 47, where Holleran and Gardner combine to bring him down. Holleran and Gardner. 2.17 to go. Well, Kentucky here. Five yards to go. I believe they've got two timeouts left in the ball game, Bert. And if they can stop the Tigers here, they're certainly going to start calling them. LSU up by only three at 15-12. 1.55 to go. Tigers using all of that clock, and this time they use too much. I was looking at the clock, and Hodson just bleeding it for all he could, Bert, but it ran out on him. So it'll be a third and ten. I don't think he was bleeding it. I think he was unaware at the time. back him up and it'll be a third down and 10 at about the 42 yard line which stops the clock that's right there you see it LSU in a three-point lead and believe you me this has been an uphill struggle tonight 147 remaining there are the penalty numbers tonight. Hudson, there's the draw. And he's down at about the 48-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. And the Tigers will have to kick it away. And once again, Kentucky will get one more chance. One of the Tigers down, and he appears to be going to be slow at getting up. Tommy Hudson dropped him back here. It's a draw all the way as you see the offensive line release their pass block and head up field trying to get that secondary block. Appears to be rough and Rodriguez. 6'1", 266 pound junior out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. One of the LSU Tigers fine interior linemen. Left guard. And a big man. And a fine football player. 137 remaining. LSU and Kentucky. And it's been a real dog fight tonight at Tiger Stadium. And I believe they charged Kentucky with a timeout. Didn't they? Well, they must have. But I did not see them signal one. Well, I saw him signaling, but normally when they give you a, an injury timeout, they will give it back, but I believe they already had called it. 
Here's what a punt. He's averaged 48 yards tonight, and he gets off another beauty. Tolbert there catches the ball at the eight-yard line. 44-yard punt. A big difference in this football game tonight, Bert Jones, has been the LSU Tiger kicking game. There's no doubt about it. Bourgeois has been called to task many times, and he has come through in fine fashion. That is true. The kicking game has been the difference, which we were kind of jokingly saying before the game, but it truly has been, as quite often you'll find, these special teams games critical. Bill drops back to pass in his own end zone. Oh, Lord, it's picked off. Jackson, still on his feet. Tigers at the 13-yard line. Big defensive play. Jackson. 15-yard return, and that may do it for the Tigers. And give the offensive game ball to the defense. No doubt. Ford dropping back, looking downfield. Once again, just overthrows. No, it was there. It was just so was Greg Jackson there. Going into coverage gets you in trouble. As Jackson is now looking for a hole to get in. Play, Greg. 116 to go as the Tigers will just run out the clock. Hudson to Williams. Well, I don't know about running out the clock. They ran it up for about six yards. One minute to go in the ball game. And the clock is running. seconds on the clock. That's on the 25 second clock. Hudson. Williams fights his way down inside that five. He's down to about the four. 30 seconds remaining. 28. Tigers by three. Kentucky has one timeout left. And they use it. Finally, but boy, they let about 15 or 16 seconds go off that clock. We'll be back right after this timeout. LSU leads by a score of 15 to 12. Hi, everybody. This is Jim Hawthorne, and I'm excited that the college basketball season is just around the corner. Right now is the time to get your LSU basketball season tickets. 17 games in the Pete Maravich Assembly Center for only $153. And the new family plan with special designated seating is only $119 per seat. Get your Tiger basketball season tickets now at the LSU Athletic Department Ticket Office or call 388-2184 for more information. Hey, take a tip from me. Get them this year. It may be your last shot at it. LSU leads 15 to 12. Burt Jones, 16 seconds to go. This has been a tough game for LSU tonight. It has been that, but the defense has come through. The offense sputtered pretty much all night long. But once again, as they did last week, the defense came through, kept them in the game, and this should be the last play. That's it. Barking signals. Just kneel down to the football. And that ought to do it. And the people that are booing must have 10 points. <laughs> That's the ball game. LSU defeats Kentucky in a hard-fought football game by a score of 15 to 12. Burt Jones, it wasn't pretty, but it was a win. It's on the left side, the W column, and that's where it really counts. A win is a win is a win is a win, as Mike will tell you, and I'm sure he's happy to get that win, even though his team didn't perform that well. We were scared of an emotional letdown, and I think that they had that. But the good teams can override that ebb in their emotions and go ahead and win the game, as they did tonight. Bert, you made the point about the defense. We talked about it many times. I don't think people realize how hard it is for a defense to control a football game. Most of these offenses are so varied, so complex, such great skill people. They did it. Let's go down to the field to Greg. All right, 
coach. Tough ball game. The offense didn't, didn't move the ball as much as you'd like. Well, we won. That's all I care. And we won 15 to 12. And uh, we have some guys hurt you know, that we didn't get let out. You know, Slip Watkins did not play. Not an excuse. We didn't play very well offensively, but we played well enough to win. Defensively, you guys came out and had a heck of a ball game. Well, our defense, Greg, has played well all year. And uh, we got some the special teams is what won the ball game for us. You know, the, the bad snaps and we had the two block punts. Our special teams carried us tonight to defense. And, you know, we got a long ways to go offensively. But uh, our win is a win. We're 4-2, and two, and we got a week off, and we need it real bad. Throughout the game, looks like he had a lot of guy bu guys bumped and bruised. Well, you know, we played five straight games, and uh, we held some people out today. Uh, we had some guys playing late in the ball game that really shouldn't have been playing, but, you know, we had no choice. We're going to play them, and our players have a lot of pride in themselves, and they played very hard, even though they were hurt. This had to be a big game. Vanderbilt beat Florida today. You guys are right back in it. Well, we're 3-1, and one. you know, and Kentucky has played everybody so well. You know, they had Alabama beat. They had Auburn on the ropes. They had us on the ropes. You know, you feel sorry for them because they're a hell of a football team, and, uh, you know, but I, I'm glad we won. Coach, got an open day. Good luck and uh, get some rest. Thank you, Greg. Let's go back up to you guys. football in the country. I think we proved that tonight. Kentucky comes in with a two and three record tonight. Had some tough losses. Gave LSU all they wanted tonight and maybe a little bit more. Well, like you said, I don't think there's any doubt. I think the SEC is the toughest conference in the country. And once again, you saw a fine Kentucky football team go away.